Hello and welcome to another flying video at flight level 180. Today we are in the F-33A in X-Plane 11. Uh, this is the Carinado airplane with the rep reality expansion pack overlay. And there goes the airplane there. Some pretty good speed even though we're at high altitude here. Uh, we're actually over Telluride which is in Colorado in the United States and uh, it's a super high altitude airport. You can see we're barely above the field, maybe a thousand feet above the field and uh, we're at already at 10,000 feet. So extremely high altitude airport. So I'm going to walk you through all the great things about this, this particular Carinata with the reality expansion pack overlay the great things about it and the things that really need to be fixed. And I think you'll find there's a good mix of both. Uh, this is really intended for people. I mean, the product and the review itself is really intended for people that are advanced simmers really into a close to reality situation in, in X-Plane 11. Uh, the Carinado, uh, if you're familiar with the airplane, you know, it's a very, they have very pretty airplanes. Uh, the cosmetics are great. The reflections are great. The surfaces are great. Really nice. But when you actually uh, dig into the details of how the systems work and, you know, such forth, things that are, that are particular to the airplane, like performances levels and such forth, they really fall short to the point where, you know, if you're a serious, a serious simmer, they aren't the greatest airplanes. So the rep, the rep packages, which are available for a number of Carinado and just base X-Plane airplanes, try to address those issues. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to bring up, I uh, have some slides about it. So the, let's go ahead and jump forward a little bit. Uh, so the F-33A is a straight-tailed Beechcraft Bonanza, uh, normally aspirated, 520 horsepower engine. I'm sorry, 285 horsepower engine. Uh, this model has a IO520, which is normally aspirated, six cylinder horizontally opposed engine, uh, fuel injected, of course. Uh, the uh, airplane, it's basically a 170 knot airplane. It's slightly slower than the V35B, which is the V tail version, uh, but it has a little bit less tail wag. Uh, Pretty popular airplane, very good airplane. Let's just take a look. Uh, you can see, like, you know, the details are great here. You can see the pilots in there, and, you know, they're actually doing things as they, as they fly along. It's pretty cool. So, anyway, I, it's not really about, you know, if you're buying the rep package, it's really not about the cosmetics as much as being about, you know, what, uh, what the airplane does in terms of performance and such forth. So... That's what we're going to focus on. Um, got my altitude to hold on here. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So overview. Uh, we talked about the Carinado package, so let's skip that. To get the rep package, you need to buy the, you need to buy the base Carinado airplane, and then you need to buy the rep package on top of that, and you install it on top of it. Uh, so what rep does well? And let me start things off by saying that I really love the rep package. As you can see, as you look at my, you know, my tack here, I have 69 hours, and that's actually after the so the settings for the airplane got blown away. I probably have 200 hours on this particular airplane with the rep package. It's my go-to airplane in X plane. Uh, you know, even though there's some things that don't work super well, it really is uh, it really is a good airplane. And for what my purposes purposes are, which is to fly as close to reality as possible, and you know, to learn an X plane for the real thing, uh, I really like the airplane. So you know, as much as I piss on things, I think it's great, and I think it's the go-to thing in X plane from my perspective, from a GA perspective. Uh, so, so let's go into the things that are done very well here. The sounds are great. You know, I have a lot of time in mostly V-tail bonanzas, but you know, when you turn on the fuel pump in this airplane and 
you know, the sound is just just right on. It's almost eerie how close it is. Obviously, they sampled a real airplane. Um, the flight dynamics are generally good. They're far improved from the Carinado version. Uh, it feels pretty close to the real thing. You know, you're, you're just not going to get all the way there, but man, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, it has failures built in, which is pretty cool. So you'll have your vacuum pump fail, you know, way more than would happen in real life, but enough to keep things spicy. Uh, you know, if you abuse your engine, you damage your engine and such forth. It's a nice idea. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, they have a weight and balance system. You actually can go here and click on this button here. Uh, it's not going to let me open it because we're not on the ground, but you can actually go in and put in weights and it actually affects the performance of the airplane when you put in fuel or you change the passenger load. It's great. Uh, the economy system is wonderful. That's here. We won't be able to pull that up. You pull out the maintenance report and it's the last page. It gives you, you know, money for conducting a flight and, you know, you get bonuses for good landings and when you pay for things like, you know, fuel or oil or, you know, if you damage things, it's pretty cool. It really, uh, it's a really nice thing. Uh, it, it makes, makes it fun uh, in ways that go beyond just flying. Uh, so what rep does best? This is really the reason for me that you would buy this package is so it gives you a great understanding of how uh, how engines work and how so if you look up there in the top left corner you can see the white line at the very top and that shows you you know what's your fuel flow what's your CHTs what's your EGTs and the most important thing is it shows you now I'm 69 degrees Lena peak so I pulled my mixture knob all the way back to get to 69 degrees Lena peak and what that is, is you're basically, I don't really want to give you an engine technology class. If you want to learn this stuff, go and read Mixture Magic in uh, Pelican's Perch on the web. It's probably the best thing ever written about it. But uh, it allows you to, to learn those concepts and understand where the red box is. It will tell you, rep will tell you you're inside the red box, you're damaging your engine if you're actually at a power setting that is not good. And... You know, it's knowing it theoretically and using it in a real airplane, you, you, uh, you learn something. But, but to really understand it, I think this is such a good tool to actually go and play with a mixture knob until you actually understand perfectly. You know, if I go leaner here, what does it do? What does it do to my CHTs? What does it do to my AGT? Am I, am I in the box, red box or not? And it's truly the art of the least known art of flying is is engine management there's so many old timers that don't understand this stuff that you know that learned before the stuff was really truly understood and and you know a lot of the stuff was possible before balanced fuel injectors took place so i i think it's uh just great stuff uh and i strongly recommend it to anybody that really wants to take things to the next step uh more good things the sound system is great uh, there's a way to turn down the cockpit noise. You can actually go into plugins, settings, and pop this up. And you can see here, you can adjust the sound level. And this was, as of you know, a few months ago, this was definitely loud. And being able to change this on this page, you know, great job, Rep. You really did a nice job of fixing that because that was, you know, you, you almost needed to turn the sound on the entire game down. It was so loud. Uh, great job. Uh, you know, they fixed the stall horn. They have a, obviously they're committed to fixing some of the issues. Uh, and the stall horn was, it didn't work at all and it seems to be fixed. Uh, they fixed the gear warning horn, which was a problem before, and that seems to be fixed. So generally they're doing a good job of keeping things fixed and improving things. Uh, so let's go into the bad things. And I hate to sound like, you know, I'm pissing on the product, but there are a lot of things that just aren't right and if you go to anything anything that x-plane does that manages is basically perfect you know the instrument approaches the you know the the adf needle you know radar altimeter anything like that is just great it really is well done anything that carinado and rep does when you look at it in depth it's just not quite right and it's annoying 
and you're gonna see a little bit of it here but you can almost go to anything and look at it and there's just little niggling things that are annoying so you know if you're like me and you spent time in bonanzas and you understand understand how things should work and you see that it doesn't work it does get under your skin a little bit you know if you don't haven't had that experience like me you know maybe it won't bother you as much but there's definitely a little bit of attention to the detail that is lacking uh let me show you something else so this is just annoying i'm in heading mode right now okay the servos are controlling the position of trim tabs uh, in the airplane. So if I take and turn off the autopilot, the airplane should stay essentially straight and level from where we have it right now and not deviate much from that course. And I'm just gonna hit the autopilot disconnect button here. So let's do that and let's see what happens. Wow, that is, uh, maybe they fixed things there, but uh, that, was, that would result in a violent change of, 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 of uh, pitch and of roll. Uh, you dive off to the left. So that, that's interesting. That's, you know, and it's also inconsistent to some degree. Sometimes you get some strange effects and uh, that was, that's a little bit surprising. And uh, so, you know, just keep in mind that that's just a little detail thing that sometimes happen. Uh, let me show you what happens when you drop the gear. So I'm going to turn off the autopilot. Now, one of the great things about the Bonanza is you can be approaching a glide slope. You're about to intercept the glide slope. And if you want to take and start your descent at around 500 feet per minute, you just hit your gear button. Okay? You drop your gear and the airplane goes from straight and level without any trim change to 500 feet per minute. So I just drop my gear. Watch what happens. Okay, so we are 1,000 feet per minute, 2,000 feet per minute, 3,000 feet per minute. You know, that is not good. And gear coming back up, but uh, that is not great. And, you know, and then I bring my gear up and, you know, nose goes pitching up. You know, we're at 2,000. Yeah, that's not as, not as troubling as the other thing, but the... Uh, Generally, that's not a great thing that uh, that you drop the gear and it just goes crashing down. It's just another attention to detail thing. Uh, let's go ahead and let's engage vertical speed. Uh, let me show you the flaps. So I'm going to level out here. Okay. So trying to level out and I turn off my now. Here's a great example. So I just turn off the autopilot and you know the airplane's straight and level and now it's pitching up like crazy. So that's what I was talking about, and that's it's usually a more extreme effect. Okay, so I'm cruising along, straight and level, pretty well trimmed. I'm going to go ahead and drop the flaps. So I'm going to do one notch of flaps. If you look down here, you can see it go down. There they go. And watch what happens. You know, I'm up to 3,000 feet per minute without any downward pressure. And that kind of ballooning maybe it's just the bonanzas i've been in but that that does not happen uh the airplane basically has a little bit of nose up effect but there's not this massive moment of nose up so another thing that's that's just annoying uh and it really is makes it hard to you know you're on your base leg and you drop a notch of flaps and boom your nose is you know way up in the sky it's not great uh let's go ahead and jump to the next page and here we go so let's talk percent of power here and you know this again is not intended to be an engine class and let's go ahead and start pulling our nose down a little bit and vertical speed on uh vertical speed is on okay good so this is not intended to be an engine class again if you want to learn this stuff you should read mixture magic i highly recommend it uh, but when you're leaning a peak, you can easily calculate your power, okay? So, and when you're rich a peak, you can't do that because you're pouring extra fuel onto the, into the engine to, to, to uh, that's, that's what it means to be rich. You're rich of the stoichiometric, uh, ideal stoichiometric position where the, the mixture of fuel and 
and air is correct to not leave any extra fuel above what you need to burn. So, sorry, I, I'm not intending to teach a class here, but this is just what it is. So when you're Lena Peak, you can be 14.9 times the fuel flow. So if you look at our fuel flow right here, we are 11 gallons per hour, okay? So if you're 11 gallons per hour, you multiply that foot by 14.9, and that means we're generating 149 horsepower. And at 149 horsepower, you should be, uh, that's 52, 149 divided by the max horsepower of 285, that's 52.3% horsepower. So I'm gonna jiggle my mixture knob a little bit here, and look what I've got here. So the power is 58%, and now I'm 10.4. So it's above the, let's see, let's get it down a little bit. There we go, we're at 10, and it's 56% horsepower. So that is too high, and that is an even more extreme effect as you go up in power. The power levels are too high for, uh, for what you should be seeing. And so it's definitely not good. And let me show you something else here. I'm gonna go a little rich, and I wanna show you what sort of power we can get. So I'm in the red box here, but we can do this for a second. So I'm at 10,500 feet and I'm seeing 65% power, okay? When you're at 10,500 feet, you cannot get 65% power. Basically, you'll see 65% power about 8,000 feet density altitude. You will not see it at 10,5 and the power levels are just too high in this airplane. They're just, they're just far too high, it's far too powerful, and it doesn't represent reality. Now, if you want a fun airplane that you know goes really fast and such forth, you, know, you can go and buy the Carinado version and it's not gonna be close to reality. I'm buying this airplane for the reality expansion. I'm buying the reality expansion pack, and the power levels are just too high. It's, you know, just details like this drive you nuts. So. Anyway, let's, let's keep moving down here. Uh, I need to pull this down a little bit. So let, let me show you something else and you probably got a sense of it. So I'm gonna go leaner and look what happens when I go too lean. So now I'm, you know, 100 and something lean a peak and you know, the engine's supposed to, what happens is your engine gets rough. And in a real airplane, you know, you don't get the RPM jumping all over the place like a jackrabbit. What you, what you feel is just a little bup, 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 just a little bumpiness out of the engine. And, you know, you don't see this huge jumping of the RPM. And I know probably what they are trying to do there is they are trying to, you know, simulate, you know, what that bumpy feeling does and what it feels like in the airplane. But that's like... You know, it makes it really hard to set up the airplane when you actually have that kind of bumpiness. And it's just not real. It's kind of sad that that's what it is. It's annoying. Uh, let's see. Uh, the mixture is very hard to set. And I'm going to show you this. Uh, so I want, I'm going to start messing with the mixture and watch what happens to the fuel flow. And I might not be able to re reproduce this. So look at that. I'm just doing little tiny jumps little tiny movements in the mixture control, tiny, tiny. And look at that. You can see it there. It's like, you know, these are just minuscule changes and it's just jumps all over the place. That might be my setup, but I suspect it's an airplane thing, but annoying. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about the EGT lean technique, which is the standard technique for leaning in the climb. Um, you can read about that in Mixture Magic. Uh, economy system is very buggy, and I wish I could show that to you, but you know, a couple of months ago, I, was, I shut down my computer, come back the next day, fire up my F33A, and all the settings for the economy system are gone. And I had about 130 hours in the airplane, and you know, tens of thousands, of, you know, $70,000 or $60,000 saved up in the economy bank account, and great, I just lost all that, uh, I just lost all that money. Uh, it's annoying, it's just, come on. 
Uh, and that might have been just a file system thing, but it's definitely not great. Uh, another thing which is more, you know, if you're using the economy system that's quite a pain in the neck is, I'm just going to show you this. If I hit my alternator off switch, watch the message I get up in the upper left corner. Never turn her on or off the alternator when the avionics master switch is on the on position. You may damage the radios. Okay? Uh, you know, I haven't really <laughs> seen that in, you know, I've never heard anybody mention that. I would be shocked if, you know, there's a power surge and all the avionics fail. But the avionics fail uh, constantly. And it looks like I may have damaged them. Ah, shoot. You know, th there we are. Uh, there. I think I killed my autopilot by doing that. So, you know, that's fine. If, if that's the way we're going to play, that's fine. We can have it damage the airplane. But it's so easy to damage the, the avionics in this airplane. For example, let's say I want to use uh, Get Me Lost, which is a great thing that puts you in a random place. Uh, puts you a random place in the middle of nowhere, somewhere in the, you know, in the locale of where you are. And then you need to find out where you are by, you know, by navigating or you can use it for engine failures and such forth. It's great. But the problem is, is when I use that with this airplane, it, it takes and uh, damages the avionics. Or if I'm sitting on a runway with the airplane on, I decide, oh, I want to move it to the other end of the runway. And I take and I change location and I hit enter in the, in the, in the control panel, boom, it damages the avionics. And it's so easy to do and it just, just seems like it happens way too often. Um, let's see. Uh, hypoxia effects are too extreme. I'm not going to go into that because you can turn those off now. You didn't used to be able to turn them off, but now you can. Uh, you know, if you're flying an L-33A, which you bought for $200,000 like this airplane would cost these days, you know, you're going to have an oxygen bottle and supplemental oxygen and cannulas. And, you know, if you're up at 15,000 feet, you're going to be wearing your cannula and there's no oxygen effects. Uh, anyway, let's not go into that. And the last thing that drives me a little bonkers is over square effects. And I had a discussion with the, one of the rep guys about this. Uh, basically, the concept of oversquare is, so look at the RPM and the manifold pressure. Right now, my RPM is 2,500, and my manifold pressure is 2,100. So right now, I'm under square. So I'm, you're under square if your RPM, 25, is greater than your manifold pressure. You're over square if your RPM is less than your manifold pressure. Now, let's see. The avionics is failing. Yes. Okay. So it's now it's I've just failed the I've just failed the avionics. It's just wonderful. But anyway, now I'm over under square. I'm over square, and this is an incredibly powerful tool to be able to fly over square in this airplane in any airplane because the and let me just go ahead and pick up the RPM a little bit just to get myself straight and level. Uh, so being able to fly over square is a great thing because it reduces your friction horsepower and your propeller, it increases your propeller efficiency in a pretty significant amount. I mean, you're talking, you know, a couple dozen horsepower to be able to fly over square. The problem with over square is when you're rich at peak and it takes and it moves your peak pressure point in the power stroke to a point that's closer to top dead center. It puts more pressure on the, on the cylinders. It results in faster engine wear. Well, when you're Lena Peak, Lena, one of the huge powers of Lena Peak is it, is, sorry, I, I know I'm going into engine technology again, but Lena Peak causes the peak pressure point to move to the right, to move later in the compression stroke, reduces pressure on the cylinders. So you have the ability to go over square when you're at high power when you're lean a peak and not damage the engines. So you get these great benefits of being under, uh, over square and being lean a peak, which is an incredibly powerful way to fly. And the rep package, it actually damages the engine when you fly over square. Now, it seems to be it doesn't happen too much when you're at lower power levels, but when you're at high power levels, it definitely damages the, air, uh, it damages the engine. I can't really show you that because I'm so high right now. But it's definitely something that needs to be fixed. 
uh, you know, if it's reality, it's reality. It's, it's not really realistic right now. Now, one of the, uh, trim this puppy up a little bit. Uh, now, I did the, the, the rep guy's comments were, well, the POH says that oversquare is bad, so that's why we damage your engine. Well, the POH can be say whatever it wants, but the POH was written, you know, for this airplane in 1970 or 1980. There was no such thing as a balanced fuel injector until 2001 when GAMI came up with a concept. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's, uh, you know, it's written for rich at peak operations. Well, when you're rich at peak at high power, you don't want to be going over square, you know? But when you're lean at peak, at high power, you can go over square. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of silly to say, oh, it damages your engine because the POH says so. No, the POH doesn't have anything to do with Lena Peak operations. There's nothing in there about Lena Peak, and it's totally inappropriate. So, you know, that really needs to be fixed, in my opinion. Um, let's go ahead and jump to the last page here. Uh, so, so that's basically it. Just to summarize, this airplane is great if you want to learn Lena Peak operations, uh, if you want to learn about engine management, if you want to fly something that's pretty close to reality in a lot of ways. You know, it's there are a lot of shortcomings. I think that's partly just because it's a simulator and it's not, you know, not a huge amount of time has gone to making this airplane perfect. I think it'll get better over the years because the rep guys are committed to fixing things. Uh, but you know, it's, it's a great airplane. I strongly recommend it. I think you just need to go into it with your eyes open and enjoy it for, for what it is. Uh, I, th I think it's great for, you know, for, for people, for beginners, not so much. It's probably just too much to, to handle. Uh, is it good for serious pilots, people that really want to understand how to fly Lena Peak, Risha Peak? that are GA pilots in the game, yeah, I think it's great. Is it good for uh, real world GA pilots? Yeah, I think this is, you know, if, if you wanna make the concepts very clear in your head, this is a great tool. Uh, I'm, obviously, I'm not a CFI, this is not for real world flight training, but, you know, you know there, there's tools out there like this that that help you can help you figure this stuff out and understand it and make it an intuitive thing for when you're in the real airplane. So I think it's great for that. Uh, this, you know, one of the reasons I love X-Plane and I just can't get into uh, the new flight simulator is, you know, it's so close to reality. It's, you can get close and, you know, flight simulator is just kind of a, you know, there's just, it's just not there. So maybe someday it will be, but uh, for now my money's on X-Plane. So anyway, I'm going to post, I'm posting up here the links to the uh, how to fly this airplane. You should watch that. And I'm going to post a link to the V35B review, which is another rep overlay. And thanks for watching. Uh, please leave positive comments and I will see you in the next video.